Hey guys, I don't usually do TV reviews. Mount's actually outside at the moment. We've got the TV unboxed. I didn't see a video of this TV uh, reviewed anywhere on YouTube. It's not gonna be professional spec or anything. First, before you get a TV like this, make sure that you have the space for it. The next thing you need to be thinking of is, can you haul this thing? I ended up packing this in a 2017 Kia Optima. I was able to get it in the trunk. I had to bungee the TV in and close the trunk lid uh, via bungee cords. Here is the TV right now playing my three-year-old uh, son's preferred content. I am shooting this video in a lowly 720p. So um, the colors and the, uh, the resolution very well may look a little bit better than actually I'm shooting. I'm sitting roughly seven feet back and it, to me, it looks great. I do like the the TV. It seemed to be packaged well with styrofoam, uh, but not overt amounts where you're gonna have to be fighting uh, with it or anything. Uh, it was pretty much easy to pull out of the box with the help of uh, one additional person. The TV, even though it's 65 inches, it is not uh, heavy by any means. Now I'm using, of course, the stand that came with it, whereas some of you may be wall mounting it it does not seem to be like super secure. Like I can, there's some wobble here going on. But as far as profile, uh, it is fairly thin guys. But you can see it is fairly thin even though you do have um, a little protrusion there at the bottom. Now viewing angles, I'm of course moving to the side and uh, you can see at extreme levels, it'll wash out a little, but Overall, no one's going to be, or you shouldn't be watching TV at those kind of extreme angles. As far as the simplicity of getting things going, I wish I could say a seamless experience. However, it was not. As soon as I plugged this TV in, it immediately powered on, of course, prompted me to pair up with this remote. After it did so, it went and it said that before I could uh, get into the operating system, that I would need to do an update, which is perfectly normal. It's expected nowadays. Uh, it paired up to my net, my wireless network, which I have, actually have two, and it paired up to them, but it would not perform the update. I was like, forget, forget that. I'll go ahead and connect via Ethernet. I tried to run the update, and unfortunately, it would not uh, run it. And it, it's just a continuous uh, update loop that looks like the TV's completely frozen, does nothing for an extended period of time. I wish I had recorded that whole experience so you would see what's going on, but it's a miserable experience. The fix was for me to uh, update it manually via USB drive. They give you an address to go to and you get the files and then you just simply stick it in the TV and go back to your settings and update it manually. But that is a pain in the butt. But fortunately, it did allow me to, to get the TV up and running. Now, I'm not gonna to complain too much because guys, this TV was purchased at Meijer for $300, a 65 inch TV for $300. I'm not going to expect much for $300, but this is what you ultimately get. Uh, this is the operating system. And I find the response to actually be very acceptable from the click response from the remote through the operating system. You can hear the remote fairly smooth. It's not perfect, but guys, it was 300 bucks. Now, if you don't find this on sale, I think originally this thing is at 500. Letter game. You want the letter game? Yeah, so for $500, I don't know as if I would buy this TV because simply there might be some better options out there. However, uh, for 
That's a different story. Overall, I do like this operating system, this Zumo operating system. This brand, this TV is an element. I was looking into uh, this company before buying. Notice that they had previously made a lot of Roku TVs. I wasn't sure how I would like this operating system, the Zumo, because I believe I believe it is a uh, conglomeration of this charter and Comcast, uh, like little, they went in to uh, buy out Zumo. And uh, essentially just this alternative to Amazon and Roku, but because it is, I guess, newer and it's not as popularized, I wasn't really sure how I'd like it. But I can tell you guys that so far, and now it's brand new, but so far this TV appears to be fairly snappy through the experience and I am liking it. As soon as you turn the TV on and you're pretty much greeted with this operating system, your most recent app is going to show your recently watched content will be there. As you move down, you have this nice feature called My List. I like it because you can go in to my list. You can add different shows to that list. So rather than go trying to remember what app uh, had the content that you wanted to watch, you can simply go into uh, your my list section. And the way that you would add content is you would simply highlight the content uh, hit a plus sign on the remote and that will add it to the my list if you're watching local channels After you connect an antenna you simply go into your antenna you hit enter And you're you're given a nice uh, channel guide of all of your uh, local channels. This is a lost Thing that I, I love that a lot of TVs are kind of moving away from but I'm old school guys I'm 43 years old and I, I kind of like my old with my new this remote this thing is is excellent in my opinion we have channel buttons guys so if I want to watch my local channel 19 I can punch that in and I'm good I'm there and I love that uh, I've recently been watching a Roku uh, TV, a very cheap Philips Roku television. It's very simplistic. You know, you've got your cycle wheel on the other remote and you have, uh, you have a few of these little app buttons. But when it comes to a channel button, you don't have one. So you're like thumbing through to try to get the channel wherever you want to watch, you know, and that's, fr that's very frustrating. Just the little subtle nuances where you've got two of these buttons here. So in the dark, you can feel those two uh, bumps and that lets you know where that central location is. If you know anything about smart TVs, you're using, you're typically using home buttons a lot. I had an LG TV that had the home button and it's just a it was paint over rubber essentially and what happens is over time that rubs off well this is a very very glossy finish with that home icon underneath it it's not going anywhere guys um so fantastic feel of this plus you've got a different textile feel for the app buttons some of your most widely used apps right there. Uh, a YouTube button would have been nice. Then, of course, we have our central uh, button here. Uh, I guess maybe the only complaint that I would have is, and it's not even really a complaint, guys. It's just like if you were to ergonomically plan this, most people are going to be holding a remote like this. And one of the Roku features, they, they'll have the volume rocker on the side. So most people are right-handed, so they're picking up the remote with the right hand with the thumb location over here uh, with the volume over here on the side. I recognize for left-handed people that would not be ideal. If you're holding this remote and, you, and you're using volume a lot, then you're reaching up here. It's a little, it's like a 
more awkward lo location. I'd rather this to have been reversed. But that's just a super picky thing. And then right here, you do have voice command um, ability. Fantastic remote, guys. Uh, my wife complained about how clicky this sound is. And I, so I will show you that. So I recognize it, it is a very noisy remote. Overall, as far as the form factor, I love this thing. Back to the TV. Once I had it all updated, I was, it, it allowed me to have access to all these apps. And the apps were pre-downloaded. So say if you're a Prime Video user, you hit this button here, which highlights it. You can move the location of that. If that's your centrally used app, then you can use that, enter it, and you're set. So you can easily move these app locations. You've got access to streaming content. You can see kind of where it's coming from. Zumo Play over here, however, the shimmer and shine. It's uh, coming from Pluto TV. It's just giving you recommendations based on, you know, whatever you like to watch. However, right now it doesn't know what I like to watch because I literally just installed this yesterday. I do like that it has this franchise collection stuff going on. And then I can go in here and say, I like this kind of stuff. So, you know, it specializes Batman, okay? So I'll, I like Batman. So I click Batman. And then all of a sudden I have all of this Batman related content that just appears. And uh, let's say I want to go to the Dark Knight. And I hit it. And you can see where it's going to be coming from. Voodoo, Netflix. So if I hit watch now then it's going to give me the options of do I want to watch it on this if I'm a subscriber there watch on Netflix and so on so this just makes it easy um, for some of the recommended content if you have this find it faster section it's just giving you just recommended content within the operating system uh, let's talk about just some settings that this TV has okay so I'm going into the settings and you have quick settings and then you have settings and there's really not much you can do here. Like we go into picture settings. You can change it from theater to vivid, standard and all of that. You can adjust custom settings. Compared to other smart TVs, these settings are extremely basic. You know, you, you're not getting a lot of settings that you can actually change. You don't have really anything else that's going to um, impact the picture. Like you can't turn off any motion smoothing or, or anything. There's no noise correction or anything to turn off. It is, it's like literally the picture settings that you are given, these standard presets on the right, they are what you, you have. If you're more about simplicity, this TV is perfect. If you're a picture snob, you probably w will want to stay away. You know? But for $300 for a 65-inch TV, I am not complaining one bit. The other thing that I love about this TV is my inputs. Here. They're readily viewable, you know, visible very quickly. Now, one feature that this TV supports that isn't mentioned surprisingly on the outside of the box is its support for Dolby Vision and some TVs they support the color standard of HDR uh, 10 and then HDR 10 plus and there's all of these are just like color standards within the industry uh, this TV actually supports Dolby Vision which is uh, really cool okay and you, you saw up in the upper left-hand corner, it appeared, it said Dolby Vision, which I think uh, looks rather good for what it is. The rewind and fast-forward uh, settings, a lot of TVs, you want to fast-forward, you click a button, and it uh, fast-forwards slowly. However, this TV, I mean, as soon as you press it, I mean, it's zooming right along uh, fairly quickly, then you can even press it to go faster 
Within the Dolby Vision, it seems uh, to be smooth, but in full transparency, I noticed a couple times watching film that it would sometimes it would not do a full stutter. It would um, it would freeze for just a brief moment and then you know pick up within a second or something. I don't really know if that was due to as you can see it right now you saw it i don't know if that's due to the my uh internet connection because uh of course this is a fairly a good amount of data and i do have broadband connection so it shouldn't be much of an issue but again this is a um, higher amount of data coming across so it actually might be the speed of the transmission however it very well could be the processing power of the TV. Uh, so, you know, I can't really speak on that. You know, I've just noticed that every now and then there will be a, a brief pause. I feel like for $300, the blacks are looking, for the most part, black. There's some gray tone in there, obviously. But uh, for a $300 TV, it is definitely worth it. This is the screensaver that pops up on the TV after uh, 15 minutes of not doing much of anything. However, you're, if you're watching a show or something, it's not going to do, it's not going to come up. But if they're, if you're at the operating system, you haven't selected something, 15 minutes later, this is what's popping up. Are you having fun, bud? The voice command feature, awesome, right? You hit it, and then uh, I'm going to select this, hold it down, just say... Blippy picks it up immediately. Just gonna pull up the content. There we go. We're in Blippy land, and so much easier. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Look how fast snappy that is, guys. Uh, all right, we're gonna just do a quick test of the responsiveness of the app buttons. So this is the Peacock button. Okay. It's really hard to get an idea of what the sound is like, especially with when I'm recording on an iPhone, uh, shooting in 720p. We'll go ahead and give this a shot. The 16 right now. Very loud TV. I'm talking with my regular voice to give you a frame of reference of how loud this TV is. What I'm hearing, the mids and the highs are, are fine. I'm not hearing uh, a lot of defined lows. So, um, you know, you're going to want to probably use a sound bar. This is how the TV is looking in a dark room. Looking quite nice. Pretty good contrast. Nothing is super washed out. Um, pretty clear. I have tested the airplay mode and it works seamlessly. Uh, no problem at all. Another really cool thing that I've found is pretty sweet, guys. If you sign up for a Zumo account, they are giving you six months of Peacock Premium uh, for free. I, I forgot the price. Uh, around six bucks, is it? Uh, six or seven dollars uh, per month that you're saving in addition to um getting a, an extremely great deal on a tv i think that sums it up guys the element uh uhd 65 inch tv is a fantastic buy at the current price i just think you can't go wrong now the one uh thing that of course i cannot test would be its longevity i have decreased the backlights in an effort to preserve the LEDs 
over time. The other thing is where this operating system is rather new in terms of its partnership with the Element Company and um, the two cable conglomerates. Um, we can't exactly know what the support is going to be for these TVs going forward on the apps, but definitely a great start. And I like what I'm seeing. I would love to, have, of course, have seen uh, some more features within the TV that I could uh, work with and adjust the picture quality. Right now, this is the sport mode, by the way. For anything else, I pretty much move it back to theater. I have not ran my... Uh, I'm just rocking the PS4 down there. Batman edition. I have not ran that yet on the TV. But I anticipate that it will look just fine. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Sorry it was so long, but I do like to be thorough. Alright, have a great night.